Hi. Hi. So in the previous video, we saw what uh, traction vectors are and we uh, saw, we also saw that this traction vector changes its direction and magnitude as you change the orientation of the plane in which you are making the observation. We represented this orientation by normal unit vector to the surfaces. Note that we were making the observation at a point. Okay. And we then um, came to know that what Cauchy predicted. He predicted that uh, this variation of the traction with the change in the orientation or the normal unit vector is a linear function. And we represented this function by a uh, Greek letter sigma. And now our aim is to find out what this sigma is. Okay, so let's start. So one sentence in the Cauchy's prediction was that this relationship is a linear function. Okay, it's a linear relationship. So let us take a detour and try to understand what a linear function is. And this, this kind of uh, uh, detour will help us maintain the constant uh, flow of information. Okay, now we know what a function is, right? A function takes an input x and gives out an output y. Okay. And we can also see this kind of relationship between two things like, like x and y as a mapping where we, there is f is a map from x to y. All element in x are mapped to all element in y by some kind of a map called f. Okay. We call all these two converse, converse, conversions uh, as transformations or oh, a generic term. We'll call them as transformation where these two things these two modules are somehow related to each other these modules are mathematical mathematically called vector spaces you are familiar with one type of vector spaces called geometric vector spaces and you know that those geometric vector spaces in which you plot lines and the points have bases like geometric bases like uh, i j k or e i e1 e2 and e3 those kind of basis function uh, basis basis vectors uh, represent those vector spaces now let us get into the understanding of this transformation from some another point of view okay some another form consider two points in the x and y planes so see these are geometric vector spaces whose basis function basis vectors are x1 and x2 y1 and y2 respectively for x and y and there is a mapping or a map f from x to y and we know beforehand uh, the images of these two points in the y plane are this for this point the circle is 7 comma 5 and for the square it's 4 comma 5 okay we can represent uh, this point in this x or y, y plane is a column column matrix of two rows and one column okay. a column vector so what we intend to find is a transformer that transform this one three point this point into seven five we are intending to find this transformer similarly so since the transformer this this map is the same so the same transformer will transform this two comma one point to four comma five that's our task so why did we introduce this uh, a vector notation a column vector like this we represented a point like this why did we do that because we can represent this transformer like a matrix okay you can see if we replace this transformer by this matrix 1 2 and 2 1 and if you do this matrix multiplication you get to the 0.75 4.13 and 45 for the 0.21 so what we have done here that we have represented a mapping or a function by a matrix okay what if we write this function in a traditional form it will look something like this it takes two arguments two in, uh, input arguments x1 and x2 and it outputs two out output variables like y1 and y2 and those are related as y1 is x1 plus 2x2 and y2 is 2x1 plus x2 okay this is the traditional way we represent the function f of x the difference here is it is a function of two variables 
also just as, as we saw just now we can represent this kind of mapping as a transformation as a x is equals to y where a will call a as a transformer okay we transform any point in x we call any vector in x to a vector in y okay now we saw what transformations are we saw that some transformation can be represented as a matrix operation and these type of transformation which can be represented as a matrix operation are called linear transformations okay so just let's see what why why they're linear what what do you mean by linear transformation okay so consider these two statements okay so what this two statements says that if you add the argument okay then you can otherwise you can do what you can do you can without adding the argument you can apply this function on individual argument and then add them similarly with multiplication if you want to multiply the argument instead of applying this function on this multiplied argument you can just take the function on the initial argument and then multiply afterwards or if you combine both these statements we can generic we can write this in a generic form like this okay both multiplication and addition combined okay so let's uh, try to uh, write these things into a statements what we are going to which what these uh, mathematical uh, relationships are saying is that do the sum or multiplication or combination before the transformation okay you are not transforming right now in x or do it after the transformation okay by individually transforming whatever you are doing and then doing that operation in the y the both these operations both these ways will lead you to same result this will this is only valid for a linear transformation let let's see how does it look for the previous in, in the previous example okay for example if you want to find out what is f of x1 plus x2 when x1 is defined as 1 comma 3 and x2 is 1 comma 1 think of these as a as some point in x1 x2 plane okay so these are the two points we want to find out f of x1 plus x2 now okay so in the first way what we can do is we can first calculate this operation of addition we have added the two vectors and what we got is 2 comma 4 this this diamond point now what we'll do we'll transform it using our transformer which was 1 2 2 1 right we have transformed this point to 4 and we got this image 10 comma 8 in the y plane so in the another way what we can do is we can first transform x1 and x2 individually like this okay f of x1 would be the transformer acting on 1 3 so we'll get this image 7 5 and for 1 1 we get an image 3 3 okay now once we have these images of the individual vectors we can add them in white space and we get, and this leads to the same point 10 comma 8 okay so you can see here that this addition is taking place for the first method in the x plane and the second method in the y plane but in the second method you are making two transformation in the first method you are just making single transformation okay so such type of transformations in which operation of addition and scalar multiplication are preserved are called linear transformation what do we mean by preserved you can think it something like this that the changes that you are making to your arguments or the input input argument the same changes will be reflected in the output or in the function okay that's what we mean by preservation of addition and scalar multiplication that operations are actually addition and scalar multiplication here we explain uh, the addition but addition is nothing but uh, multiplication is nothing but n times addition so you can uh, so no, no need of discussing uh, multiplication in here and we also saw such linear transformations can be expressed as matrix operation but not all transformations such as non-linear transformations cannot be represented as matrix operation okay uh, fine so we know that we can represent a function of several variable as a map or a transformation okay 
and some of these transformations example linear transformation or affine transformations also we are not going to discuss what affine transformation are right now can be represented as a matrix operation okay that's what we discussed so what kaushi said and why did we took this tour so what he said that this function sigma that we are aiming to find out is a linear function or a linear transformation so that's why can we write this linear transformation function sigma as a matrix operation yeah why, why why not that's what we did in the previous example so this will make the things easier because we can simply write because since this traction vector tn has three components and n also has three components we can represent this sigma as a 3 by 3 matrix similar to the previous example where we had two points had two components and our transformer was 2 by 2 matrix similarly in this 3d the since the components of traction and the normal unit vector are 3 3 cross uh, 1 cross 3 uh, 3 cross 1 that's why the com the size of sigma will also be 3 by 3 okay so this is what we wanted to find out and now notice that we have removed the brackets where sigma is now a matrix and n is also n is a vector tn is also a vector okay the sigma is written something like this n is written something like this and t is something like this so what this transformer sigma is doing it is actually uh, converting a normal unit vector into attraction okay so this statement is called cauchy stress theorem still one we don't know what a stress what stress is we have not introduced this term so wait for a bit i will introduce this term at the right time and uh, what this statement says using sigma if someone gives you sigma and asks you that what's the attraction at at a point in this direction okay in n direction direction of n is the plane you are specifying a plane then you can using this cauchy stress theorem you can give him the distraction the three components of the traction vector t1 t2 and t3 okay notice that the unit of traction is newton per meter square that's why the unit of sigma should also be newton per meter square the unit of n is basically it's unitless what is that we have not still introduced the physical meaning of what a sigma is we don't know what it is we'll just consider it as a matrix transformation nothing else nothing more nothing less it's just a matrix transformation and up to this point what we know sigma is a matrix transformation and just forget about forget about the term stress that's why i have grayed it out so forget about the term stress just focus that this sigma is just a matrix operation okay a matrix transformation that uh, it is it's a function that converts the three components of the normal unit vector to three components of the traction vector okay no, and notice that since uh, these we have written these things in the component forms they are written with respect to some basis function a uh, 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 coordinate system with basis e1 e2 and e3 okay so just to make sure that uh, these things are complete we have uh, shown a coordinate system in which these components are written so that's it for this video uh, in, in the next video we'll try to get into what a uh, stress is and introduce what 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 the things that you thought were correct uh, about stresses were actually flawed so thank you for your time and uh, please subscribe if you find these videos uh, helpful thank you